People were okay with me liking Jesus as long as I didn't like him enough to actually do what he said. When I liked him enough to do what he said, then it was like, you tripping, man, you doing too much stuff. So now wait a minute, bro. I see y'all racking with your hands high. Waiting for that beat to take off, ain't always so stand by. When I'm breathing bangles, I say, stay my shit, I stand by. Crangle, shake that beat, drop, land, land, slap. Please let me off my leap. When I was really young, my worldview was uh, really centered around me. I loved playing sports and I loved music. I was really impressed with myself. You know, I'm a good rapper. You know, I rap with my friends in school and it came a point when I was like, we all rapping, but I think I might actually be kind of good at this. I want to do music so that I can get this praise because I'm so good at it. And I want to holler girls so I can get this little ego boost because I can pull them if I want to. And play sports, I want to be good so people think, you know, all of this stuff I kind of built as if the world was was made uh, for the praise of Trip. It was when I encountered God and who he was and what the world was really like that that kind of ridiculous world he was shattered. It's cold, watch your steps. I'm at the watch my breath. So cold, ain't got no grip. Stand firm, I'm folded across my chest. So cold, won't suck. When the time, on schedule. Way low, got to own up. So cold, need a cold mouth. I would go to church with my family every now and then. I didn't like it, no kid likes church. But yeah, so I knew about God from a young age. And when I was a real little kid, I repeated a prayer after the children's pastor and assumed like, hey, that's what gets me into heaven. Say the magic words and I'll let you in. I didn't, I didn't get it, you know? So those were empty words I repeated. Got a lot of problems, but I'm straight. That's sweet. I know my God is awesome in the late. That's sweet. How many times I gotta take it? He the boss and him anything, a piece of cake. That's sweet. So when I was 13 or 14, I started going to the same church. It was a big black Baptist mega church in uh, in Dallas. And I say predominantly black. It was like two white people in the church. I started going to the youth group for social reasons. I thought some girls were cute, so I decided to go. I had bad motivations. God had good ones. And the youth pastor put up with me and my antics. And he was faithful. He preached the gospel. As I started to click, I started to understand that the purpose of the church is not this community of people who like got it all together and Jesus accepted them because they became lovable. It's these people that Jesus purchased while they were lovable, while we were sinners. Uh, Christ died for the ungodly. It really changed the way I saw the entire world. There's just all this stuff that I think over time I unlearned about God that allowed me to finally say, oh, that's who Jesus is. I understood what the good news was. Pop the bed to pray in the morning Have been sleeping for too long, I'm yawning They bury me in black suit, black tie I'm alive and I woke up looking flat So from now on, from, from now on You can count me as a Russ from, from now on, you can count me as a Russ from, from now on, you can count me as a Russ From a dead man walk as a Russ I'm always encouraging people like Find people who are more mature than you And just sit, sit at their feet and learn from them People poured into me and uh, showed me areas where I was weak and immature. As long as I was by myself, I could isolate it and pretend like it wasn't there. Uh, but you know, when I welcome people into my life, then it's like, well, if you don't want to keep doing that, then maybe you should stop going to this place where that always happens. It's like, oh yeah, that's probably true. Look, all I need is one sixteen. The rag on my king, Rome is one sixteen. You know, I can remember a conversation with a dude. We were sitting in class, and he was looking at this girl with her back turned to us. He was like, "Bro, check, check her out." And I was like, "This little battle went on in my heart." I'm, like, I'm not trying to look upon women with lust. He's like, "Why have you been acting like this, man? Like, stop it." And it would make me ask myself, like, "Am I doing too much?" Just when I read the Bible, I thought, "No, I think this is what I'm supposed to be doing." My goal is to rest. No it was like people were okay with me liking Jesus as long as I didn't like him enough to actually do what he said. When I liked him enough to do what he said, then it was like, you tripping, man, you doing too much, stop. And so I don't say that to like big up myself. You know, the Lord opened my eyes and showed me. And so I, I had to live for Jesus. There was a loneliness to it at times, but you know, the Lord provides. Probably cause he put me on blast, like a racket, man. When, when we make people perfect heroes, 
I don't think it's even as inspiring that way. I don't have cameras rolling when I make the worst decisions of my life. You don't see that stuff. People only see my highlight reel. But when we paint a more accurate picture, like, no, here's a broken man who the Lord has brought a long way, that's way more inspiring. That seems like something that I can aspire towards and maybe the Lord could do in me. Now, I stand on the stage not because I'm some perfect man and all of the pieces of my life are always perfectly in place. I stand on this stage because I'm a broken man like everybody else. And there's a Jesus who's put me back together. And there's a Jesus who has progressively put me back together. If you look in the Bible, it's like all the people that the Lord used are, are a mess. I might do this for you. You know, and the Lord slowly makes them more and more like him and they limp along that path. I might do this for you. This past like 10 years, I've had a, a illness called chronic fatigue syndrome that has, it's been the hardest part of my, of every part of my life. Uh, I go to college in 06, that same year I meet my wife and we're friends over that first year. And then I go on tour the summer of 07 during break. That's the first like national tour I went on. And I get back and I'm not feeling great. And then like, I got really feeling terrible, but it's just tiredness. So like, it was like one day I was like knocked out for like that whole day. And then it just kind of kept going. I remember my, my roommate, uh, Paul, he was a dude who was always on top of everything. So he was like, Trip, what's going on? You missing your classes? Like I noticed you ain't been waking up. I'm like, I'm just not feeling well. He was judging me. I felt like a bum. So after a week of like sleeping 18 hours a day and being exhausted even when I was up, I'm like, that's something ain't right. And so I go to the doctor. And they're like, oh, you just got a virus. Take this, you'll be all right. And but y'all got the same problems. Look, I know I got enemies in my pay. If I got venom leaves growing in my trees, that villain scheming out fast. I'm not all right. You know, it continues on. And so I uh, go back to that doctor, and he's like, I don't know. I thought it was just his virus. Maybe you have chronic fatigue syndrome. I'm like, what is that? Can't crack it. Some things to take you back. So there's nothing you can really do about it. You know, just kind of take these antibiotics and then just kind of try to um, eat good and get enough rest and you'll be fine. I hadn't seen people in months. and failed all my classes that semester. And, you know, I'm learning that doctors don't understand it very well. Uh, that it's really like, we'll test you for everything else we think it could be. And if it's not that and you have these symptoms, we'll say it's chronic fatigue syndrome. You want my hope destroyed. Because this thing is misunderstood, you know, I had this guidance counselor at the school, like, try to tell me I just needed uh, better studying skills, like, that that was my, my issue. And, and the thing is, because doctors don't understand that well, I don't understand it that well, and I'm like, maybe she's pregnant, but I'm just lazy, you know. Kind of in denial that my strength had been taken from me, and it wasn't a thing, like, I had a tired day and I'm going to catch up tomorrow. And it took me a long time to kind of come to that place that I have a new reality. the fuel that gets you through everything that you do. I mean, it's almost like your phone, if your phone dies, there's no battery. It's not like you can only use some of that, but you can't use it, you know what I'm saying? And so it's really been a 10 year journey of really fully understanding. I can't keep expecting myself to do the amount of stuff that I could do a couple of years ago because I'm not the same person. This is like everything, it affects everything. And it's especially hard because people see that I do a lot of stuff, you know, like, oh, you put out music and you put out a book, you're fine. Uh, even for like close friends and family, it's just hard to understand. And it's been, me and my wife been married for almost eight years and you know, there's stuff that she's still just now understanding. It is just a weird thing. I'm not able to, uh, keep my word all the time. I'm not able to be as reliable as I'd like to be. I'm in a position where I have to depend on the grace and patience and understanding of others. My way home. My rear view mirror's ripped out. On my way home. Hey, why little bad, let's lift out. On my way home. No reminiscing that when that battle. On my way home. Don't dwell on the past unless this gal got. Let's 
Man, God has been so gracious to give me this job where I can be flexible. Because there's so many people who have chronic fatigue who uh, don't have work. They cannot work. They cannot provide for their families. You know, I'm my own boss um, with most of my work. You know, I'm in partnership with a record label and a book publisher. Um, I am on staff at a church. But for all my other work, there's like a deadline that I'm trying to meet. But other than that, I can work during the hours that I have energy. Uh, and that's been extremely helpful. Uh, when I have concerts, say I'm on a tour and I have a 30 minute set, you know, every day I could sleep the whole day and just be on stage for 30 minutes and I'd be able to do my job. My wife has been so gracious and patient and we work together on thinking through what my schedule looks like. Sometimes we think we nailed it, sometimes we think we don't and we're just always uh, working to, to make it better. And it's been 10 years of praying at the lower hill. And it's been 10 years of asking for strength to get through things. It's been 10 years of, Lord, give me a good day today, please. And there have been many more bad days than good days. What that can do is it can slowly, like, chip away at your trust in God. Or it can chip away at your trust in yourself and make you trust God more. Every day you feel like it's just lost after lost after lost. You know, I wrote a song called Sweet Victory, and it was dealing with my health and uh, trying to trust Jesus in the midst of that. And I got Sweet Victory tatted right there, and that's part of why, because it wasn't just a, a cool song I wrote. It was something that was at the heart of how I try to get through every day. I'm waiting in my weakness, he may be dependent. I be lying through my teeth to say I don't resent it. Even as I write these lines, I'm close to tears. But it ain't been working right for seven years. So miss me with that, keep your chin up, try to smile. Bro, I'm 26, I should feel better by a mile. Keep all your anecdotes and cute quotes. I'll pass some cliches for true hopes. For those who know God, you're waterproof. That doesn't mean that no storms are gonna come your way, you're not gonna get wet. But it does mean that you won't be destroyed. Like, no one can take those eternal joys, no one can take the guy. There has to be a rock solid joy, something I put my joy in that's not up and down. All this other stuff can go up and down all the time. If there was a chart, it'd be like money does this, and uh, friends do this, and uh, health does this. But all of that time, if you look at God, he's doing this the whole time, straight across, steady. If I put my hope in him, build my life on him, even as that hard stuff comes, it doesn't take away those joys. There's, there's abundant life in Jesus that cannot be stolen. Sweet victory, cause we win it. Yeah, you know we win it. Even though we win it, we still in it. Yeah, sweet victory. Sometimes those things right in our face can blind us to the big picture. These past few weeks have been really hard weeks for me, health wise. Like, my body may be garbage, but this body is not all I have. Like, this is. Yeah, this, my hope is not this skin and bones. You are made for something, right? But we have this very low bar and low standard for ourselves. Where I wanna say, you are made for something much greater than that. It's a bad idea to hit the snooze button and procrastinate with getting up in the morning. It is a tragic idea to procrastinate with life itself because you've been created for the glory of God right now. It wasn't like a burden that he would call me away from some of the stuff that I'm doing. It was a privilege because he was calling me to live for what I was made to live for. I wish I would have followed Jesus when I was younger because there's so many years that I wasted doing things I wasn't created for. What's going on, y'all? This is Trip Lee, and you're watching This Is Me TV. I do it for the turn up. Sometimes it ain't even funny. When them last night I lie, cause this word is my weapon, it's going for rock. 